Yo, what is going on my XRP investors? It's a great day to be in crypto. I have not seen people on Twitter switch from permabull to permabear so quick. But guys, big stuff happening on the charts today. We're looking for that $1 XRP this month or next month. I know it sounds super hypey, hopium, clickbait. I understand that. I'm not going to blame you if you think that. But in cryptocurrency, we go down like an elevator very quick. But you got to understand, we can also go up just as fast. And that, my friends, is the reality of cryptocurrency. Make sure you guys do smash the likes and subscribe down below. Can't even remember if I already said that. Not even sure. Anyways, let's get into it. Bitcoin on the day up 7%, which what's very weird is that exactly 24 hours ago, XRP was up 7% on the day. Bitcoin doing nothing. Now, Bitcoin up 7% on the day. XRP now not doing so much, but still holding a very good level. We'll go ahead and get into some charts. Uh, quick peek at the FLR token. Um, if I can, you know, maybe spell English correctly. Uh, FLR token currently sitting at, what are we doing here? 0 0.044, half a billion dollars in market cap. So Bitcoin um, ripped a fat one, dude. Bitcoin, as we talked about in a previous video, uh, when it looked around like this, we were saying that potentially Bitcoin here could run up and, you know, uh, retest the old all-time high. I want to give some credit. I mean, I don't think this guy needs it because he got so many goddamn followers on Twitter. But this guy, I saw him tweet about it, this exact chart right here, how this could potentially burst up. This guy nailed it. This guy was also charting XRP to be uh, moving up to 45 to 50 cents per coin. So check that out on the Bitcoin weekly chart, getting a massive pump here. Uh, I am seeing bears turn into bulls on Twitter like there's no tomorrow. Uh, look at some micro charts. I mean, my God, Bitcoin being the absolute monster that it is. Uh, where's the trading view ads? Okay, uh, starting down. Oh my gosh, guys, I promise you, I promise you next video, we're going to get on ad block. Anyways, back to the point. Bitcoin, 17,300 earlier today, bursts all the way up to 18,300, goes for the pullback. And right here, guys, right here is why I do not leverage trade crypto. I've tried leverage trading crypto and kind of treated it more so like gambling, like if it was playing blackjack or poker, because again, at the end of the day, I'm not a trader on the short term stuff. I do like to trade long term by holding bags, but leverage trading cryptocurrency short term, this is why I don't do it. Because in this scenario, it doesn't matter if you're betting on it to go up or betting on it to go down. Either way, the big boys of this market, they are trying to hunt your stop loss and take your money. So they send it down from 18300 to 17900 back up to 18300 back down again to 18000 back up to 18300 back down to 17900 and then blast off to the moon. This right here, folks, is why I do not leverage trade cryptocurrency. You know what? Buying cryptocurrency, stacking up your favorite coin, looking for the moonshot, no problem with that. But high leverage trading, very short-term charts, that's why I don't do it. Because in the cryptocurrency market, or really in any market that people love to leverage trade, there's always the big boys coming after your stop loss, trying to steal your money. So basically, guys, that's the five-minute chart. Uh, check the one-hour chart. Bitcoin being an absolute monster. Um, all of the Twitter bears are now bulls. I mean, look at this thing, man. Look at this thing. Okay, Bitcoin in the weekly chart. It was playing the all-time high zone, right? It uh, Bitcoin, what it did is it broke below all-time high. Kind of got, you know, a little bit of that, you know, low, higher, low. Went back to grab the FTX dump. Uh, this candle right here, this is all the FTX crash right there. Bitcoin now reclaiming it, retesting previous all-time high. Do believe it is going to smash through. I mean, Bitcoin also at the same time does have a tremendous, tremendous falling wedge. And the reason why I'm talking about Bitcoin so much is because Bitcoin can help carry us to that $1 XRP price. As you guys know, on the channel, we've been talking about for, I don't know, like 11 videos in a row. It's like, you know, newsflash, quadruple bottom on the weekly chart while Bitcoin is preparing a nice little moonshot scenario back to all-time high. Fellas, it's it's looking great. Let me just tell you, it's looking great. All right? This is some charts I have because I was actually, um, I was on Discord with my friend and I was kind of showing him what I think XRP is going to do. And it's like, you know, XRP trades for like half a decade in this kind of demand zone range. 
touches, you know, down into the bottom end a few times, just like up here, and then it eventually conquers the top end of it four times, conquers the top end of it four times, and that's where I'm thinking XRP is headed to. So I'm just saying right now, XRP has so much, if there's kids and family in the room, turn off the video, but there's so much fucking room for XRP to pump, okay? Everything that is being set up right now on the charts, um, okay, let's go through the trading view ads. Oh my God, dude, they are just bombarding me here. XRP's got so much room to pump. That's the thing, man. Um, you know, I'm not hating on XRP, but all I'm saying is it's been 1,925 days since all-time high, and now we are getting a textbook repeat of the previous cycle, conquering the top end of the demand zone with four touches for the blast off. We're doing the same goddamn thing again. And then if you want me to delete my, you know, terrible technical analysis, just look at it from a very straightforward standpoint. Guys, it's coming. All right? It's coming. Fellas, the charts are repeating themselves. I know it doesn't look exactly the same. But you know what? Back here is the same thing that's going on right now, except the difference is back here was much less liquidity. Lower liquidity, lower price, except it's happening over here again, except higher price, higher liquidity. So I believe it's kind of dragging out longer and taking more time. All right. Final little theory for this chart, because I'm telling you guys, we've been waiting six years. There's a new all-time high coming. All right. We don't know exactly what XRP is going to go to. I know there's Fibonacci extensions saying like $3 a coin, 7, 10, 12, 13. I don't know exactly what's going to happen, but I would bet my ass that this year we got a new all-time high coming. And maybe it's just, you know, $3, 4 5 6 7 maybe it's 12 13 20 I don't know what it is, but an all-time high is so long overdue, we got this pressure cooker scenario where it just needs to blast off. All right, guys. Hope I got you a nice little, you know, daily dose of hopium, but let me just show you, okay? Let me just show you. XRP hits all-time high, crash, almost all-time high, but not quite. Slow drawdown, conquers the top end of the demand zone. All-time high, crash, almost all-time high, but not quite. Drawdown, conquers the top end of the demand zone. Blast-off time, fellas. It is blast-off time, okay? So, um... One thing I want to talk about is uh, David Schwartz is getting a little bit opinionated over on Twitter here. I'm not going to be taking any sides because I can understand both sides of the argument, but it sounds like David Schwartz is um, is a little bit against the flare token here. All right. The current flare holding rules for subsequent airdrops leave absolutely no incentive not to sell your FLR now. You lose nothing if you sell now. While it's true you won't get the subsequent airdrops, you do not lose them. You get 100% of their value when you sell your flare since the buyer can wrap that flare and get the airdrops. This seems like a very strange decision to me. Honestly, the only way I can explain it is that they simply didn't want to keep their commitment and instead only wanted to give 15% of what they promised. I want to be wrong, but I don't see how. This is where the opinions really come in here. Um, I feel bad saying this. I love the project and want the best for it and want to believe the best about it. But my honest opinion is that they leveraged the XRP community to grow and weaken their promises drastically when they felt they didn't need it anymore. And that's why I believe FLR launch day dumping was crazy. You know, I'm not saying I like 100% I agree with what David's saying, but you got to admit he does have a point after stringing us along for like two, three years. And constantly delaying the airdrop date, you know, you created a lot of launch day dumpers. I think the FLR project could have been executed um, in a much better fashion. Again, I'm no coder. I don't, you know, actually know about how to make a coin and promote it and, you know, launch it. But I'm just saying I feel like they could have done a better job, a.k.a. don't delay the project four to five times in two years and piss everybody off. Which is why I believe the coin is now at like four or five cents a coin. 
So David Schwartz also says, uh, that said, uh, it does not make them a dishonest or make their project a bad one. XRP evolved and didn't keep some promises made in the early days. You can love FLR and XRP too. It's not one or the other, but I don't have a happy, fuzzy feeling about how it went down. So valid criticism. Um, you know, I'm not saying Flare is a total scam. I don't think that's what it is. Uh, I do have some theories that maybe they did rug pull Songbird for the liquidity to open up offices in Dubai. I don't know. Again, just my, you know, stupid brain thinking, but... Again, you can kind of play both sides of the coin here. You can kind of play both sides of the coin. Well, guys, all right. Dollar XRP coming soon. All-time high this year. Cobcast, 6 to 12-hour marathon streams watching the charts. It's coming back, everyone. And thank you so much for tuning the video today. I'll see you guys in the next one.